If you are looking to be the squad savior and the squad's defender, you are in the right spot as today we are going to get you on your way to mastering the heroic defender Newcastle in Apex Legends. If you are an old OG Apex player, then you may remember the days of Lifeline hopping on her teammates to activate that revive shield while she picks them up. Well, if you do fast forward three plus years later, you now have Newcastle who can also hop on his teammates to revive them with the shield. But this time you can also drag them around to get them out of cover and better protect them with the shield. The shield also shares a rarity with your knockdown, which does mean that the best knockdown shield should be prioritized to the Newcastle. The protection it does provide is slightly different than when you are knocked and it is outlined on screen for you. If the knockdown does take damage and then you as Newcastle do get knocked, your knockdown will have less of a charge, so be warned. As of the posting of this video, the knockdown is a little bit buggy, so the on-screen visuals may be a little bit different than the actual health or charge it has. If the knockdown shield does get broken while you are reviving someone, you cannot hop off and then back on to recharge the shield, so be warned, you and your teammate will be left revealed. The big thing with this revive shield is to be aware of the enemy's locations and don't be afraid to leap on your squad to pull them out of tough situations. You can cancel the revive by manually pressing the on-screen prompt, and this can be useful if you want to return fire or if you want to drag your teammate a little bit further behind cover before getting them up in the open where they may just be re-knocked. The shield is pretty decent at blocking damage if any enemy is outside of close range, but if someone is close up and personal, it probably is not going to turn out too great. There's not a ton to really know about this passive ability, but it is also worth mentioning that Newcastle is a fortified legend as his hitbox is a pretty large one. As we move on, be sure to look at my pinned comment down below for any and all changes to Newcastle since the launch of this video. I'll also let you know down there if this guide is no longer relevant. Newcastle's tactical ability, the mobile shield, has a bunch of things going for it and it's actually a little more complex than it seems at its first glance. The basic gist of the ability is that it's a throwable and movable shield with an upper and lower section where each portion has about 350 total health. The distance it can be thrown is around 20 meters, although you can direct it to go much further than that 20 meters. This is just the in-air distance it will travel. Controlling the shield is simple, more or less point and click, but the big thing to know is that the shield will not turn around and do a 180 physical turn of the shield while you are behind the drone. If you want to actually make the drone turn 180, you will need to step outside of the rear portion of the shield, or at least finesse and turn the shield in small increments like 45 degrees. If you want a really basic way to be sure the shield is pointing in the direction you are looking, the ideal way to do this is to line up yourself, the drone part, and the direction you want to go while also staying within a couple meters of the shield. This will more or less always turn the shield the direction you want. If you do want to go 180, you will need to walk through and turn around before redirecting. If you want a for sure way not to have to worry about the rotating shield, try to have the shield thrown and placed down the right way on its initial use. If you are familiar with Gibraltar, in a lot of ways, this shield is like a mini partial Gibraltar dome shield that can't be moved around as you walk in and out of it, but not shoot through it. This makes playing off and fighting with this shield like a bubble fight very valuable and a skill that all Newcastles should be learning is how to beat enemy shots while staying protected. This will let you force enemies to waste partial magazines before you unload on them when they need a reload. It's pretty obvious, but the shield moves for a good reason. You can use this shield to get quick cover in open areas to cross long larger open gaps. This temporary relief from fire is a huge way to get that battery or healing item off or even assist with a revive. The curvature of the shield is actually a huge deal as the slight curve is enough for you to pocket yourself inside of the shield and give you much more cover than if it was just a straight wall. Be sure to pocket your legend in the shield as needed and even rotate the shield to have maximum efficiency and protection as someone tries to wrap around you. I can't understate how clutch it is to drop the shield and quickly pop a healing item before any enemy is able to push up to you. Generally sticking close to your shield is the way to go, but sometimes throwing the mobile shield at a doorway or a window an enemy is peeking through is a great way to completely block them while you get that push across or escape from a revealing area. Unlike Gibraltar's dome shield, this tactile shield is not strong enough to block or cut off Watson's fences, so unfortunately the shield cannot be used in that manner. However, the shield is tall enough for you to pop a Valkyrie ultimate and launch off. Just be warned that your teammates on the side are actually going to be partially outside of the shield, and this really is just just enough cover so Valkyrie can pop her ultimate. The big thing with the tactile is to always be using it. The active timer is 20 seconds and the cooldown is only 15 seconds, so you are gonna get this thing quite frequently. 
so you might as well be using it. Newcastle's ultimate, the Castle Wall, is going to be where he shines, and while this ability does seem like the defensive ability to rule all defensive abilities, truly the support capabilities of this, in conjunction with his other abilities, is going to be where he excels. But as we move on, if you are enjoying the video, do me a huge favor and hit the like button, and if you don't want to play with randoms, or you just want to chat with myself and the community, hop into the community discord, we would love to have you. This ultimate is a complete fortress wall that Newcastle can lead into the air to place down up to 35 meters away on his own or even attaching and locking on to teammates up to a massive 70 meters away. Each portion of the wall, the two lower sections and the three larger sections do have 750 health. Upon the initial placement of the castle wall, it even gets an electrified charge to stun and damage enemies who try to climb through it or just get too close to the wall. And this charge does last for 30 seconds. The wall will also knock back any enemy that it lands close to. Portions of the wall will not construct if you are on extreme unlevel ground or if you are near a drop off. So take care with your landing locations. Newcastle can remove portions of the wall with an on-screen prompt, and the big counter for these walls will be the fact that enemies can simply punch the walls twice to break portions of them. When you are leaving through the air in the ultimate and right before you are about to come in contact with the ground, you want to turn and look around to better place the wall in the direction you want to place it. The bread and butter use for this ultimate is going to be the capability to hop to your squad mates. This is where Newcastle's support capabilities really start to come in handy. If a teammate gets knocked, you can jump right to them, place the wall down, and fortify up, while all also using either the tactical shield and or the passive revive to start reviving. Of course, if you are not able to jump to your knocked friendlies or your teammates fast enough, you can also jump right to their death box to grab their card and make that quick getaway. You can really do some crazy jumps to teammates and really as long as they are not inside of a building or in a really closed off area, you are going to be able to leap right to them. Another great use for the ultimate is going to be just to control the engagement and gain superior positioning. Because you do leap into the air, this does give it a lot of capability to rapidly gain high ground or a rooftop to control and apply pressure to your enemies. Second of this is going to be using it indoors in more closed off areas. Using the ultimate inside will allow you to really separate rooms and better fortify a building. Remember the wall is initially electrified so really no one can climb over it without more or less getting lasered and the wall itself is a great tool to share a building with players in an end game situation if needed. A smart and quick placement can also pretty much block doors completely, almost like a rampart wall on steroids. While players are not meleeing the wall too much right now, the more and more players do figure this out, players will just melee twice to break the wall and breach into your area. But of course, after that electrified charge is gone, and if they don't want to take some damage. Because there is so many use cases for the ultimate, this makes it very interesting when you do look at Newcastle's playstyle. Since Newcastle is a fortified legend, he will more easily be beamed and targeted, but he can also actually act as the team scout if he does get in trouble, you can ultimate leap back to your squad. Just take note that much like Wraith's tactical, there is a brief charge up of the ultimate and it will leave him slightly revealed and slowed when he is using the ult. Combling the tactical wall shield and his ultimate is going to be a great way to use it with some safety without getting beamed while it's activating. Legend combos and teammates are also a pretty big deal. This is not going to be the case so much in trios because you will leave your third behind, but another possible use in something like duos is to have your movement legend squad mate scout around to a safe area and then Newcastle can leap to them to bypass movement in the open. This could be a legend like Wraith queuing across the open or someone like Pathfinder grappling to height. Other great combos you really need to consider are going to be Watson or Caustic to better fortify the walls with fences and gas traps or a Watson gen to stop ordinary from coming in if you are on something like hype. Beyond this though, pretty much every other legend will have some useful cases with Newcastle. Revenant ultimate from height, Valkyrie ultimate to height, and then fortify more walls with Rampart or even Loba where you are looting behind the fortified area. A few other things that you really should be considering with Newcastle. For starters, you are going to want to give him the gold bag as his reviving capabilities are top notch. And it's not per se very useful, but you can hit someone with a tactical shield drone for 20 damage. There's two huge legends you will want to look out for as a counter to Newcastle and this is going to be both Fuse and Mad Maggie. Fuse's knuckle cluster specifically shred his walls and Mad Maggie's drill is also pretty deadly so watch out for both of these abilities. Additionally Crypto's EMP will not destroy the walls but it will destroy the electrified portion after you do use Newcastle's ultimate. The tactical wall is also going to be great for just general cover when you need to be doing any sort of task. This could be finishing enemies, reviving players, it could be looting a death box or peeking an alternate angle. You can drop the wall to cover your side or back so you don't get tapped by someone else while you are shooting at another player. 
player. Also, you do not need to be selfish with this tactical. Since it is controllable remotely, you can send it out to get your teammates to use it or help them cross an open area. There's a few really great use case scenarios that I do want to go over with you so you really understand how to use his abilities properly. The first is going to be when both of my teammates do get knocked. I end up pulling my one teammate away from the third party to get him up with some safety. As I'm doing this, my other teammate does go down. Right after I do revive this one friendly, I am going to ultimate all the way over to my third friendly to get him up as well. The second scenario is a 3v3 endgame scenario where one team is exiting the ring very late. I'm going to use my ultimate and hop right into the middle of this open area. By doing this, I am pinching them up against the ring, preventing them from really moving into command center. At the same time, my teammate is rotating through command center to get the far doorway so they have no way of exiting from this little corner. We're going to completely pinch them off, get a knock, and then apply pressure to get the win. The third scenario is a great one showcasing the movement of Newcastle. I get a pick from range. Normally, there would be no way to get to this player without having some sort of zip line or movement ability. However, I do use Newcastle's ultimate. I use it all the way to the balcony of this area. I use an arc star grenade to flush out this wraith, and then I quickly get the wraith down with an Eva 8, and I am able to clutch up this 2v1, all because I do have Newcastle's ultimate ability. The big thing with these three scenarios is the fact that Newcastle's ultimate really has insane speed once it starts going. It makes it very difficult for anyone to really hit you out of the air and you're more or less going to be safe. If I had to ride something like a Pathfinder zipline, there would be a moment where an enemy could be me, but because I am on Newcastle, I really am not going to have this issue. Unless, of course, I am activating the ultimate when an enemy already has sights on me. Newcastle in today's meta is a tough one, so ranking him is pretty difficult. While in my opinion, he is not better than a legend like Gibraltar, he is still very useful and this does put him in the upper tier of legends in Apex, somewhere around the top 7 to top 9. If you want even more to improve your skills in Apex Legends though, be sure to check out my 101 tip video, but until next time, happy gaming legends.